it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed and today we're going to take a look in on blue on my 55 gallon worm bin. So first we're going to start off with this end which I'm going to try and sift a little bit and see if I can't recover a little bit more castings and then we will take a look in on the feeding. All right let me get you set up. Okay we're back. So I am just real estate's at a premium at this end of the bin now so um, we're getting down to the end. All right. And I'm not, you know, there's still a lot of things in here. Oops, sticker. Um, that are not obviously, you know, broke down. So I'm just gonna toss this and uh, put this at the end of the bin when we're done. Okay, so there we go. That's today's haul. I'll put that with the rest. Okay, next thing to do is to move these worms down to this end, a little bit farther. Making sure to keep my finished end fluffed. Um, I did hear somebody ask, is it necessary to fluff? No, it's not. But there are repercussions if you don't. Uh, you're, so you're kind of gambling if you don't fluff. Um, it, it doesn't really have to do with um, like a procedure you must follow. But what I do it for is to maintain, you know, a moisture that is the same throughout the bin. And if I don't fluff, then it will get kind of dry on the on the top and then wet on the bottom. And then you're never really um, finishing everything off. So that's why I do it personally. It's not like it's a hard, fast rule. Your worms won't hate you, but for me, that is why it's important, is because of that. Okay, so we're getting there. We're down to the last maybe three or four gallons over there. All right, let me uh, get you turned around here, and we will look at the business end. Okay, we're going to start off with the next to oldest part, and that is what is under the lid here that I'm trying to get them to finish up. So, looks like they're going to finish this up pretty fast, definitely. But I think we did feed down at this end. I really need to try and write myself a note to look at the old video. Because I am feeding this end, uh, because they still have quite a bit of bedding and, and stuff to go through. So, oops, worm quake. Uh, you know, let me know in your bins, you know, do you wait till everything is all the way finished? That's what it looks like when they don't grow an avocado tree. 
Let me know if you wait till it is all finished or do you uh, go in and harvest and get rid of the castings before everything's done. Um, I, of course, am one of those people that lets it get probably three quarters of the way done and, and then I uh, impatiently go in after it and uh, harvest and then just put the leftovers back, back in the bin or put it in the leftovers bin. All right, I know we fed in the middle here, so oh, there we go. Get the castings off the top here, and we'll see how big this worm ball is. So that's part of the worm ball here. So it looks like they're still working on the banana and some of the fruit in here. So I don't think this end is not going to need any food. It's just still got, you know, two or three bananas, which is enough for a few worms to, to keep going for sure. So more avocados growing. So yeah, I'm going to just keep keep this end going. It's probably got about another month, I think, before I can harvest this. Um, but they do seem to be moving very fast. I think last time I said it would be a couple of months, and now I'm thinking only one. So let me flip you around, and we will look at the new end, or the new middle. Whatever. We're going to look at the new part. Okay. So here we are in the middle, where we fed... Um, the new stuff last time. So let's take a look. Now I have a, a side project for myself here. I ordered some avocados from a guy in Florida and uh, look at the size of these seeds. Aren't they nuts? But um, because in order to get a fruit or off of a avocado tree you have to have a part A and a part B or a type A type B and since all of my other ones are Haas avocados they don't have a, a partner that's a different kind so I put these guys in in some castings here and I'm gonna try and sprout them and grow them into trees in hopes that they will be the other kind that mine will need in order to make avocados um, just a personal mission. I don't don't plan on growing avocados for real or anything, but just something I like to do. Um, all right, so let's look in here. I know we fed in here pretty heavily. I'm not sure if it's here or here, so try not to. Well, oh, never mind. I think I found it. Yeah. found the worm ball. Holy cow, look at that. Hopefully the camera's picking up how pretty those blues are. I think there's more. But wait, there's more. Oh, there we go. Kind of hanging around the sticks. Not sure what that food is. It's pretty far gone. Doesn't smell like anything at this point. And that's when you know that it's well on its way to being worm castings, is when it doesn't smell like rotten food. So that was a good that was a good call. That's a good worm ball for today. So they have gone through most of that food. Let me go get them some more food and some bedding. All right, I'm back. So I'm going to kind of gather up the big food and 
the sticks and, and stu such so I can put that in with the, the new feeding. Pile up the, the ends. flatten this out and let me move you forward. Okay, so here we are in the new feeding zone. Going to dump some of my prepared bedding in there. And that is cardboard, uh, junk mail, food boxes, uh, coconut coir, um, kelp meal, and um, eggshells, and of course water. This has only been sitting for a couple of days, not a couple of weeks, so they might take a little longer to get through this bedding. Wasn't as prepared as before, or as usual. So I'm going to put that down first, and now we're going to get them fed up. Okay. So they are going to get uh, about a quarter of a cantaloupe and uh, this had started to rot on the inside and you can tell that it is still partially frozen. Get off there little guy. So we will probably have a lovely worm ball again next time because melons are definitely fast food and uh, with as many worms as there are in here they will definitely run over to this part very quickly and give us a good worm ball for next week. Alright, I'm going to give them another handful of bedding to top that up. And then I'm going to put where I had been sifting previously. So I had been putting all of the stuff that was sifted all into a bucket, and that was uh, last week. And I was like, okay, well, probably ought to put those guys back. They don't need to live in their own bucket. So we're getting an infusion of worms in here. Um, if you watched the outside bin, uh, let me know. Do you think I should bait, bait some of these out and try and get uh, another couple handfuls of worms for the outside bin? Or should I let the uh, food attract them naturally? Put that in the comment below and let me, let me know your thoughts. Alright guys, well if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.